So um, Uniassist was something I started in my second year of university. Um, so it's great to be here. My name is Jasmine Kaur. Um, I am a third year student at University of Warwick and I'm studying biochemistry. Uh, well, I just finished my third year and I'm just going into my fourth year starting in September. And would you like to mention your hometown? Uh, I am from the hometown of Coventry, which I've lived in for the past six years, but originally I'm from India, so um, just means I can speak multiple languages. Okay. So could you remind us of the course? Could you tell us about UniAssist? So UniAssist is a um, charity that I started while I was in university, while I was 19. Uh, and it's a charity to help young people from low income backgrounds uh, to improve their access to higher education. Okay. So could you remind us of the course you're taking at university? Uh, so I'm studying uh, biochemistry, which is like 30% chemistry and then the rest is like pure biological knowledge. And why did you choose your course? Um, so I kind of came to biochemistry through like an indirect route. I thought I always wanted to do medicine because I was always intrigued by biology, but I never quite knew which specific discipline I wanted to study. Um, so I came across this book called The Epigenetics Revolution, one of the best books I've ever read that changed my life. Um, and it just made me realize that how passionate I am about um, the molecular sciences, like studying about life at the basic level of DNA and the genetic code, like that just kind of blew my mind. Um, so I think a month before I sent off my UCAS application, I decided actually biochemistry is the course for me. Um, and that was probably one of the best choices I ever made. Okay. And obviously you said you've done three years of the course now. What have you thought about the course? Um, I think um, it's definitely a very, if you're someone who likes depth of knowledge, biochemistry is a very good choice. Um, and it's actually, it gives you an understanding about how life works at a basic molecular level. Um, and I think one thing that's quite exciting with um, a biochemistry degree is the huge variety of careers you can go into. Um, it gives you so many skills, not just um, analytical skills or practical skills and research, but um, quantitative skills. I know a lot of people who've gone into banking after biochemistry because the, the range of skills they have. So um, I quite like that about my course. So did you come from a sixth form or college background? So I did my A-levels at a sixth form in Coventry. And what A-levels did you do? Um, so I did biology, chemistry, physics, um, and I did Punjabi, which is um, like an Asian language up to A-level, and I did AS psychology as well. And did any of these subjects help you with your course? Um, so, um, like a no-brainer, biology and chemistry are pretty much meant for biochemistry. But um, I would say, um, like, physics was surprisingly very helpful for me. Um, we do have modules in biochemistry that underpin um, how does physical laws of nature um, allow molecules to join up and then for a cell to form. So there is some, some fundamental physical principles that you study as part of my course. Um, but I think just being able to handle mathematics, data and problem solving, which is probably a very, very essential skill in 21st century as a student. Um, physics was actually a very good subject. Um, one thing I would say is um, I, if, if you're someone who takes um, uh, subjects that involve essay writing, so like history or English, is also very, very useful because it's very likely that you will be writing quite a few essays in your um, three or four years of biochemistry while in while you're in university. Okay so what do you think the best A-level slash, slash subjects are for your course? Um, I want to say like it would seem kind of a natural choice to say biology but I think the skills the mindset that you learn from taking chemistry which is a lot more rigorous than biology at A level is probably um, a very, very good subject. Um, and I know some universities that will allow you to even do biochemistry if you don't have biology, strictly speaking. But 
they, if, if they know that you can, if you're a person who can perform well in chemistry, then you can easily handle biochemistry. Um, but it really depends between different universities and if it's a Russell group or a non-Russell group university as well. Okay, so could you tell us about your placement year? So um, I'm quite happy and excited that my university allows me to do that. So um, this year I will be conducting my master's year uh, at a company, GSK, which is like... Um, a, sorry, not to stop you, could you quickly explain how it's different to a usual course? Yeah, so um, our university has like quite a few choices. So if you just want to take the typical three year course and graduate at the end of it um, to get your bachelor's degree, you can do that. But the route that I've chosen, so um, instead of graduating this year, um, even though I finished my third year, I will be graduating next year at the end of my four year period. So um, starting from this September, um, I will be taking a placement at GSK. Um, and as part of my placement at GSK, not only will I be working full time, so I will be paid, yay, uh, but I will be, um, the research that I conduct as part of my placement will form part of a master thesis. So by the end of next year, I will have a combined master's um, and a bachelor's degree. So you took three years and then for your final year, you do a placement and a master's degree in one. Yeah, that's it. Okay. And, and obviously very excited for the placement year. So could you tell us more about the company and what you'll actually be doing in the placement? Um, so uh, my role, it, it's kind of like a mouthful to produce. So the department that I'm working in is called a uh, biopharmaceutical process research analyst. Um, it's a big title, but essentially what it means is, um, so GSK is like a huge biopharmaceutical company. It's, it's huge internationally. Um, and as part of my role, um, so the, the medicines or the vaccines that they decide to produce, my role will invo involve looking and selecting the, the model molecules that are suitable for making those medicines so it's a very kind of chemistry and analytical heavy role um, and um, but obviously because of the current COVID-19 climate um, it's likely that I might not be able to spend as much time in the lab that I had originally planned or hoped for but uh, even if I am working remotely sometime um, there will be a lot of data to analyze and process so um, kind of it's, it's a quantitative heavy role. Okay, so if we go into the university you're studying at, which is Warwick. <laughs> so, what are the best and worst things about studying at the University of Warwick? Starting off with the worst. Oh, the worst. Um, I think the worst thing I would. Well, it's not essentially worst, but I think it could be something that could be improved on for sure. Is um. So it's it's a campus based university and it's kind of like surrounded by um, like a huge forest. So it feels almost like separate to the rest of the world. So when you go to the Warwick campus, it just feels like like you're in a bubble, like this is all there is and nothing else exists outside of this. Um, so that was like um, quite shocking for me going to Warwick. Um, so I think if it was a little bit better connected with the rest of the city, um, it would have been nicer. Anything else or is that pretty much just just the, the bubble explanation? Um, I think it, this might this is not this might not just be typical of Warwick it might be typical to other universities as well but um, I think just the whole higher education experience I wish there was like a more realistic touch to it so the three or four years that you're in university like the advice that you get from people around you the academics or staff members it just feels like like this is it that you're kind of almost like not in touch with the reality of what's going on outside of the campus like how the job market might be changes or like what things actually matter like being a good person and having practical skills might be more important than just getting like a 90% in your assignment. Like, I, I just wish with teaching there was a bit more kind of realistic um, understanding of the world around you rather than just like memorizing content and doing exams. Um, but like I said, I, I think that's something that kind of applies to a lot of universities, not, not just one as well. If we go into the best things about studying at Warwick. 
Um, I think one of the best things I've had is it, it is a very, very diverse and international campus. So that's probably because Warwick Business School is number one in the world currently. So we get um, international students from pretty much every corner of the world. And it just means that you get to make friends with such diverse group of people. You get to learn so much about other cultures and um, traditions and languages. So I, like it's just allowed me to to kind of be in touch with people from all over the world and i think that's really good okay so if we go into the work area mm -hmm. could you tell us about the work oh so before we get into the area could you tell us about your accommodation for the last three years so if we go in the uh, first year what accommodation were you living so this is um my case is a bit more <laughs> specific for me because I live in Coventry and Warwick is it's local to Coventry. I've, I've just been living at home for the past few years. So I might not be the best person to advise on accommodation. Um, but I, um, but I've done like, um, I have some friends who've been living in accommodation and um, I think in terms of budget, there's a huge range. If you're someone who doesn't want to spend too much on accommodation, there are definitely good decent options on the lower end but if you're someone who wants like um personal secluded kind of space and like an ensuite room um then we do have options in the higher end of like over 100 pounds a week and stuff so um it does have something to cater for everybody so what has it been like living at home compared and going um, to university um, I think there's pros and cons. I think the biggest kind of con for me is um, you kind of miss out on the nightlife a lot if you're living at home because like all the parties at campus start like after 11 and then like in the morning. Um, but if you're someone who lives like um, like 40 minutes away in a bus, you're, you, you're going to have to like come back home before the buses end or the transport ends. So um it's harder to access the nightlife if you're living away um, from university and you're living at home. But then, um, like personally, I'm, I'm a person who's not as big on nightlife. Like I do go to social events, but maybe um, there's just a bit more kind of calm and chill for me. So it's not been like um, that big of a deal for me. But if you're someone who is really into the nightlife and wants to experience that in the first year of university, then I would recommend actually living in accommodation. And I have some friends who are locals. They also live in Coventry, but they've just chosen to live in university accommodation for the first year because of the nightlife. Um, the biggest kind of pro I would say personally for me is like it just allows you to like a mental space to kind of step outside of like the student life. Um, so just I, I, I quite like that after I'm done with my lectures, I'm done with my assignments, I take a bus home and I kind of get back in touch with my parents, kind of the reality of the world. And I don't have to always be kind of surrounded by people the same age as me, just always talking about the same kind of stuff. So um, just stepping out of that zone, it gives me like a really good mental space, which, which I've loved. Okay. And obviously you said you haven't lived uh, in the accommodations, but from your opinion of what you've seen, what do you think the best work accommodation is? Um, I think, um, so I had a friend living in um, a accommodation called Lakeside and that's because it is literally kind of by a lakeside. It's really pretty and it's like surrounded by um, like these really pretty views and gardens. It has like a near, little pond near it. Um, I quite like that because it's like you can go for like a morning run or like an evening walk um, near your accommodation and it's like a pretty safe area. It has like cameras everywhere. Um, so uh, for me, I, I think it's a very good option if you're considering Warwick. Okay. So if we go into the work area, although you said you weren't a big fan of the nightlife, could you give us a brief description of from what you've seen? Um, so uh, Warwick kind of welcome week is huge. There's like literally something going on every single night during the first few months pretty much up until christmas so um i think the most famous nightlife event at warwick is the warwick weekly weekly pop event and it happens every wednesday night um and it's basically um kind of like a nightlife um where 
the music is like your typical kind of pop songs from like the 80s 90s or, or like your Justin Bieber's or Taylor Swift if you're into that so um it's quite popular because people just get to like dress up and be cringy also every week they have like a separate theme it's like um school dress theme or like superhero costumes so people quite enjoy that element of it um so that's kind of like the if you're really into partying side but if you're someone who's like maybe a bit more on the chilled side of things we have this really really nice like um coffee shop slash tea bar at university called curiosity um and every single week they have like a different theme and if you're someone who's like into kind of indie acoustic music every like thursday evening they invite like external um singers or some of them might even be like campus students they hold like um um spoken word events which i've been to and i've absolutely loved um on like thursday evenings um and then if you're someone who maybe likes like a bit more academic element into their social life they have like lots of pop quizzes going on um they even do like a mock university challenge um quiz style as well so if you're into that um but then obviously each society has like their own social event going on pretty much throughout the whole first month um and a lot of societies like we have quite a few um religious societies on campus as well like christianity society sikh society hindu society um and then they do hold like their um social events as well with a bit more religious and kind of chilled as well so there there is definitely something for everyone and do get involved because it, it's a big experience what's, um what's a big the part of your university experience here Sorry, what was that? What's the nightclub for you? The nightclub for me? I think, um, I would say Curiosity was probably the best, one of the best events I've experienced in first year because um, I don't like going to a big club where I can't even talk to, listen to the other people I'm speaking to. But Curiosity is like a bit more chilled and I'm, I'm more of an acoustic music person as well. So it was better suited to my clothes. Okay. So in the work area, are there a good variety of shops or have you got your basic shops such as, you know, Primark, um, Nando's, Primark, just your basic shops or is there like your, is there a good variety of shops? Um, so Warwick is a campus based university, which means um, it does have like your essential grocery stores. It has Roots, which is probably the most famous student grocery store, but that does mean like, um, things are slightly more expensive because they know you're going to be shopping here and this is like your only option nearby. But um, you can take like um, a 15 minute bus ride to the city centre and it has pretty much um, all the retail shops you need, um, all the all the big food places. Um, Coventry in general, Covington, Coventry and Lamington Spa, which are like the kind of two closest places to work in a bus. Um, they have like pretty good um shops to like buy your clothes groceries from um and even kind of like weird quirky stuff as well like lemington spa is very famous for those kind of shops um so it's it is definitely quite convenient to get around okay and are there a lot of food shops or is it kind of again your basics um on the campus itself um we do have like different restaurants but most of them are owned by the student union themselves uh but if you want to experience like um like a food chain like mcdonald's or pizza hut then you would have to get like a bus ride into the town nearby um and you you do pretty much you have like the big restaurants you have the um nando's the the last one the um Wagamama is pretty much and then you have your kind of like basic um, smaller food shops as well like locals who have like pizza places and like kebab shops um, so yeah there, there's a huge variety in Coventry especially. And do you think there's anything else a fresher or a first year would need to know about the work area kind of just to get make sure they think they need to know before they come? Um, I think um, one thing I would recommend to people is um, so the first week of freshers is um, is huge. Um, I would say like, I know people when they get to work, they wanna like explore all the areas nearby, but I would recommend maybe like the first two weeks to just kinda, um, if you do wanna attend um, nightlife, maybe just attend the Warwick organized events um, because there are like other nightclubs in Coventry itself 
and Leamington Spa as well. But thing is, like, Coventry shares its nightclubs with students from Coventry University as well, which is another university in Coventry other than Warwick. So things can get crowded. And in the past, um, things have escalated. Someone's been heard. Police has been called. So, like, I would definitely stay, like, recommend you to kind of stay away from kind of all that drama and just make sure you're safe during Freshers Week because that is like your number one priority. Just make sure that you're not putting yourself in any situation that might be potentially dangerous. Um, definitely do take advantage of it, enjoy the nightlife, but um, be careful as well. Have you got any stories from uh, from these, from these, from any of these events? Um, I think, um, so this was pretty much like the very first day that the university opened its um, doors to new students and we had like three ambulances called in the space of like an hour and a half, like um, somebody hit someone with like a chair and then somebody passed out drunk and stopped breathing. Um, I don't know what happened, but like, I think that was absolutely crazy. And, and I think that was like when it hit me, oh my gosh, it's fresh as, of course these things are gonna happen. But um, we have this like weird Warwick thing where, um, because near the Warwick we have um, like Tesco's that people often go to shopping for. It's like a 20 minute walk from the campus. Um, and Tesco's don't lock their shopping trolleys. Um, so around the Warwick campus, like when you're walking from like one department to the other, you just see like random Tesco trolleys parked like near trees. And it's really weird. We even have like an Instagram account for Warwick trolleys. And it's just people taking pictures of where they find these trolleys because it's like a lucky spotting thing now. Um, but yeah, that's one quirky thing about Warwick. So while at university, have you acquired any jobs? Um, so I, so I guess my placement year, uh, starting from September could account for like a job for a year, but, um, I've done various internships over the summer. So, um, in my first year of university, because, um, as a lot of people know, it's quite hard to find like professional internships during your first year, especially in biochemistry because it's a research based role so I said like right if I can't get a place in a lab I'm just gonna do something kind of different so um, I did like a two-week internship during Easter in Peru so I traveled all the way to Peru my first time flying alone but it was an amazing experience and it was a humanitarian relief for internship so um, I helped out with like um, clinics in, in Peruvian communities uh, and we built like um, infrastructure for people who were homeless. Um, so, and I got to do it with like um, 20 different people from different universities across the UK. We had people from Oxford, Cambridge, UCL. Um, I think I was the only one from Warwick. So it, it was a great experience. But um, in my second year, because um, I wanted to get more research experience, but, um, and if you are someone who's doing like, um, a course that has like practical teaching, I would definitely recommend you to get research experience, especially if you want to go into a scientific sector. Um, so in my second year, I did um, a placement at Manchester University with the Wellcome Trust, um, and it was funded by the Wellcome Trust, which is like a huge um, bioscience um, research organization. Um, and I stayed in Manchester for two months. Um, I worked in a professor's lab looking at like um, human developmental biology. Um, so there are there are huge opportunities. And I think the work skill and career service uh, is very, very good at like uh, giving you like individual counseling sessions or like helping you with your job or internship searches. Um, and we have this like separate website dedicated to um, opportunities where like the skills and career servers are always posting like new opportunities pretty much like every single day if you want to like go teach English abroad in like Spain you can do that or if you want to work at like a big company or like Goldman Sachs you can do that so um, we do have a lot of support in, in regards to careers so that's something that is like it's very very good for work okay so while at Warwick University did you join any societies um, so in my first year, um, I, I think I like, I still remember the Freshers' Fair, I pretty much signed up to like 
every society that caught my eye and uh it can get overwhelming because you do get a lot of emails in your inbox but like definitely try it because this is the time um so in my first year um i did i i tried the white debating society for a little bit um tried i wasn't a fan so i never kind of went back to them to the sessions uh, but i went to like um a religious societies with my friends um but in in terms of other societies i wasn't like that involved in first year i would say um but then in second year um i started going to the spoken word society that was another big one for me um i got quite interested in like kind of poetry and writing and it was like a great place to meet other people um but then i think my course is it's it has like very long contact hours like in first year i had like 38 contact hours every single week which is huge for first year for any any course uh because i have like eight eight hours of labs every week um so it just meant like i wasn't able to commit as much time to society as i would have liked um but then in second year things got a bit busier for me and i like started my own charity as well so i i pretty much didn't have that much time left so i would say like the spoken word society was like the one society i i engaged well with and what did you do in that society um so we had like um we used to hold these events um i think there was one every two months and it was like an open mic night so anyone who wanted to come up and share their poetry they could we also had people um who created their own music like we had quite a lot of rappers we had like people coming from external universities we had people coming from like ucl from like birmingham to do like spoken word for us um and then sometimes we also had like guest speakers as well um like uh people who were working maybe sometimes within the music industry even to like do like a rapping night um but it it was just like a to be honest it was a, just like a place to celebrate diversity between people um and i quite loved that about the society okay so can you tell us about your freshers at warwick your experience <laughs> i think my uh, experience was pretty chilled um as part of living at home um but i think um i tried like lots of new things in within that first week because you don't have any lectures and essentially it's like an experiment week i went to a lot of like um society events like free taster sessions i went to like an archery session just because and it was great by the way um and then um i went to kind of like um lots of acoustic nights i tried like a lot of different food places nearby um but yeah i think one thing i would say about freshers is like when it's it's like part of when you're like searching up universities when you're trying to see like what does a university social life look like or if you watch like a youtube video about it like you feel this pressure that oh if you haven't been to like six different parties in the night then you have an experience freshers right but that is like a completely wrong mindset freshers week is your week and you can make it however you want if you're someone who wants to go to every single party during that week go for it like it's your choice but if you're someone who's not into that who doesn't like that element of social life and just wants like a quieter week like go to a coffee shop with a with a friend go watch like a movie because there's a lot of like movie screenings and like the big piazza screen at warwick um like do that just make sure like you don't feel pressure to do something that you don't enjoy do like definitely put yourself in new experiences give it a try but you don't have to stretch yourself too much that it becomes like stressful for you so that would be like my number one tip um don't don't kind of listen to all those pictures or videos like make it make it however you want it to be okay so what what general advice would you give to students about to start university um i think one thing like looking back on it one thing i would um say is like um you know whilst these and schools don't do a very good job at like preparing you to be, to make a good start at university you get the qualifications but you don't necessarily have the skills um to make a make a good start um so one thing i would say is like um this is like your first that almost uh, about like becoming an adult 
like learning all those life essentials. So if you get a chance, take the time to look at personal finance. It's very, very important. It's very important that you know how to budget your money. Because I know some people who've got into like a thousand pounds overdraft within the first two weeks of freshers because they don't know how to manage their money well. And that's crazy. If you're doing that, that is crazy. Um, so make sure you understand how to budget. Make sure you know how to allocate your student finance if you're getting any. Um, and make sure you, you don't just spend it all on like non-essential like alcohol during the first month even if it's fresh you need you need food you need groceries and you need clothes and you need like your mobile contract and you need like bus pass to get to uni so make sure you have budgeted for all those things and if you get the time make sure you look into like how credit cards work because if you know how to use them well it could be a great asset and you can like build your credit score um, but if you don't know how to use them well, you will pick up depth and that will be a very crazy thing to do in your early 20s. Um, so personal finance is a very, very big tip. I think every person should learn. Um, another thing I would say is um, before you get to it, like you should really be proactive about um, like your career and your professional life beyond academia as well. Like the current job market right now is very competitive and it's going to get 10 times worse because of COVID-19. There's just not that many places left in companies. So um, make sure you're kind of proactive with like researching what you want to do. If you don't have like a clear path of what you want to do after university, that's completely fine because you're there to figure that out in a sense. So like make sure you search um, what are like different career services that your university offers. What kind of internships or what kind of companies do they have contacts with? Who can I approach if I need help? Make sure like you, you don't need to have like a thorough list, but just make sure at least you're aware of all these resources. Um, and my last and third final tip um, that I would absolutely recommend to every single student is engage with mental health at university this is one thing that i probably didn't pay that much attention to mental health is like it's a difficult subject to talk about because people think oh if i don't if i don't have stress or if i'm not depressed i never need mental health resources but mental health is like you build up that toolkit for when you're not feeling well you know how to deal with it it's very unlikely that um, you're just going to have like all the questions figure out. There is no way that's going to happen. You're going to be stressed one night because you have like 10 assignments to you, like you have internships deadline coming or you just don't know what to do with your life after next year. Like, or there's things going on in your family and it's a difficult like situation to be in. But if you know like the different mental health resources that are available at a university or like a person you can talk to if you find yourself in a difficult situation is very, very important. So pay attention to your mental health. It is absolutely essential. Um, so yeah, these are, these are my tips for students. What advice would you give to students about to start at work? Um, starting at work specifically, uh, I would say is, um, make sure you've kind of figured out if you're if you're someone who's living away from um the accommodation in your first year um make sure you figured out like which buses to take and like how much the travel costs and things like that because um in the morning when everyone's trying to get for 9 a.m lectures public transport is so crowded sometimes that you don't even get to catch a bus um so make sure you've researched that um another thing i would say is um i know some people who missed their lectures in last year because they didn't know how to access their timetable online and that is a very very sad excuse <laughs> so make sure like um warwick is like it does everything pretty much online we have like um moodle so pretty much all your assignments tests timetable any conversations with your professor like most of the things are online so make sure you know how to use like these platforms really really well because you don't want to be missing out on like an assignment just because you didn't know how to use the platform um so invest your time in, in these essential things because they are they are important 
Okay. And what advice would you give to students about to study your course? Um, for biochemistry, I would say um, make sure, like, if you do want to do some preparation before you get to uni, like, just make sure you kind of dust off any, like, old, um, like, basic chemistry equations or, like, how um, mechanisms work because that would be really helpful um, also if you've engaged well with your A-levels uh, in biology and chemistry I think the first year I won't say it will be a breeze because even though it is the first year you'll still will be learning quite a lot of content but um, there wouldn't be like a concept that is so challenging that you just you can't grasp it so if you really want to be prepared over the summer you could have like a quick read over your chemistry and biology notes from a level and it will just make sure like all the basic knowledge is kind of already there when you get to uni and you can make like a head start um on, on some other students okay so you obviously went to university over going for an apprenticeship plus going right into work what made you choose university over these two choices um i think um for my course for biochemistry there aren't that many um, specific R&D internships. I know companies like biopharmaceutical companies, even GSK, they do internships, but the department is like more like business on operations and marketing. But I was a person who wanted to go into research. So for that, I needed, I needed a university qualification. So that was a big role for me. But another thing I would also say is like, when I was about 16 or 17, I didn't know much about apprenticeships. And I think schools right now do a very bad job at teaching apprenticeships as well. I know some schools, they don't like, they don't engage the students about that at all. Like it's like university or nothing, or like your life is over. So um, I think, um, I, I wasn't, to be honest, I wasn't as well aware of the internships, um, sorry, apprenticeships as I should have been. But um, it worked out perfectly for me because I think for the kind of sector and career I want, um, university is probably a better choice. Okay. So could you tell us more about Uniatist? What it is, why you started it, when it started and what its goal is? So um, Uniassist was something I started in my second year of university. So um, I think not a lot of people know about like um, kind of access programs like the Such and Trust or like the Social Mobility Foundation. Like there's a lot of organize, organizations out there that help students who come from like a low income background or a non-traditional background to get to university. But my problem with like a lot of these programs was like they require you to not only be a person who comes from that background but then you also need like five a stars at gcse to access that support and to me it just felt like it, it was the wrong way of solving a problem because if you're someone who comes from a background where no one in your family has ever been to uni and you don't have those great grades at gcse actually you're the person who needs the most help and you're kind of being like overlooked by these organizations. So Uniassist is a program that I created where we don't have any academic requirements. So any young person who's between the ages of 16 to 18 and six or more in college, we help them get to whatever it is that they want to do beyond A levels. And we don't just promote universities, but one thing we're really trying to push is like, get students to think about alternatives, like apprenticeships, internships, like doing a job beyond A levels, because we just don't want like people to just fill up seats in lecture halls in university. We want people to make like an active decision based on what is best for their future. So that was my reason for starting Uniasis. But um, our goal essentially is that we want to make sure that more people from disadvantaged backgrounds have the opportunities that maybe someone who comes from a like a private school does we just don't want someone's like the area they live in the postcode they have or their family's income to limit their potential because every young person deserves the best future so that is our fundamental goal for for uni assist um, and i'm kind of excited to see this project grow bigger and beyond and, and all the all the lives that we get to impact through this and do you think there's anything else that needs to be mentioned about it or have you kind of gone over everything that students would need to know about it? where can we find you 
Um, so you can find me pretty much at all social platforms, uh, but I think it's best to get in touch with me um, through my LinkedIn, Jasmine Core. Um, but um, you can follow me on Twitter or Facebook as well. Um, I'm always very happy to answer any questions and engage with other young people. So please do get in touch. Where can we find the uh, Uni Assist? Um, it's pretty much in my bio for all my social media, as you can imagine, as the founder of Uni Assist. But um, you can, if you want to find out more, we do have a website. So if you just do a Uni Assist um, search on Google, or if you want to um, do a Uni Assist search on Facebook, is probably the best option because we um, do have quite a lot of information on our Facebook pages and we update them um, regularly. Okay, so at this point, we let students do what I like to call a free for all. You can say what you want, you could give advice, you could put your, we've already said your ads, but you could put your ads, you could uh, give a story, you can give literally what you want. The floor is yours. Oh gosh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Um, I think one thing, hmm, I think one thing I would say is to like um, anyone who's kind of, confused right now about like they're not sure about what they want to do like I remember being in a position where like you have some people like in your class which they have like everything figured out from A to Z and then you have some other people in your class who are like they're, they're not even sure if they're doing the right A levels right now but they're kind of doing it and they're just kind of floating by um it's a stressful situation to be in um but one thing I would say is like uncertainty in life can sometimes be a good thing if you're if you currently kind of really don't know what you want to do that's okay as long as you're making a proactive approach to experience new things and try out new things and figure out the things that you want to do professionally or like you don't like because um it, it's good like uncertainty will kind of push you to try new experiences and try new skills and sometimes it can give your life like a whole different meaning. Like I was very set on someone who wanted to go into research and wanted to be like a professor. But then I started my own charity and actually turns out that I'm someone who wants to run their own company, their own enterprise. And that just would not have happened if I hadn't kept an open mind or put myself in a new situation and kind of followed my passion. So don't worry you don't have you don't need to have it all figured out as long as you're making some little small steps you're you're going in the right direction but that would be my like <laughs> my last tip to anyone who's listening okay so um it's been it's been great being on this platform thank you to calvin for giving me this opportunity um i'm sure he's going to be making lots of amazing insightful videos so make sure you guys like subscribe to um plugged in um and stay tuned i am plugged in amazing thank you <laughs>